On the east coast of Australia, within the woodlands, a parrot-type bird. It flies in pairs, often calling to the other pairs to come together as a flock. It has rainbow colours, and its name is the Rainbow Lorikeet. Characteristically distinguished because of its purple to violet head and its orange bill. And the Rainbow Lorikeet is different than the other lorikeets, for it has a long tail. It likes woodland habitats, but will never be too far from water. The rainbow lorikeet is a specialist in the Australian bush, for he feeds on the flowers of the Australian native plants, in particular the eucalypts, and then others like this scrovilla here. Their tongue licks over the blossom, collecting nectar and pollen. They are, for all purposes, nectivorous birds. While the birds are feeding in this video, there will be close-up shots. Try and notice the eye and the tongue of these birds, for they are quite specific for lorikeets. The pupil of an eye is that little black dot in the centre. In the lorikeet, surrounding this black dot, there are two concentric rings with minor black lines in between. First is a khaki colour, and then the outer ring is red. This khaki and red ring form the iris of the bird. On the insert is a musk lorikeet eye, which shows the similar characteristic of lorikeet eyes. Another feature of lorikeets is the tongue. It has filamentous papillae, and as the tongue sweeps over the blossom, so it gathers nectar and pollen. The blossom contains the nectar, which is mostly fructose, and the pollen, which has a high protein content, approximately 30%. Watch as we do a slow motion of this bird's tongue. See the filaments? Lorikeets are extremely active. They have a high metabolic rate, so they need the nectar, they need the sugar, but also the pollen, apart from containing protein, also has essential nutrients like minerals and fats. The colours of a rainbow lorikeet are expressive of its name. They are rainbow, going from the high frequency warm colours to the low frequency blues. The multiplicity of colours in the rainbow lorikeet have also added to the multiple names of this bird. For instance, it was once called the orange-breasted lorikeet, then the blue-bellied lorikeet. But I believe the rainbow is a good description of this bird. See on this lorikeet how all the pollen is stuck to the bill and to the nose. And listen to the calls, a tweet and then a rasping call to the other birds. In Australia, we have mostly parrots that eat on seed, but all of them share a common attribute of nesting in hollows. But the lorikeet is a little bit of an exception to this, for it doesn't eat so much seed, more relying on flowers. There are physiological reasons for this. The gastrointestinal tract of a lorikeet is shorter than that of a parrot. The binomial name of a rainbow lorikeet is Trichoglossus molacanus. Trichoglossus meaning hairy tongue, and the molacanus is after the Malaccas Islands of Indonesia. The rainbow lorikeet is found mostly on the east coast of Australia, but if we head up to the top end of Australia, we will find this lorikeet. This one has a red collar, called Trichoglossus rubitorcus. So it is a different species, but like all lorikeets, they both have a dominance of green. This one is a bird fancier's delight, for it has yellow markings on the wing colour, replacing the characteristic green. Taxonomic names of birds and most living things is a binomial system using classical Greek and Latin, so it could be understood throughout the world. It's introduced by Carl Linnaeus, a Swedish zoologist. Linnaeus made an enormous contribution to biological sciences with this taxonomic system. He wrote 12 volumes giving taxonomic names to the common names that people understood for their birds. As Linnaeus aged, so it came time to slow down with his writing, and the 13th transcript was written by a German zoologist called Johann Gemlin, and Gemlin introduced the term Molacanus as the species name, believing that it came from the Malacus for it was very similar to the Malaccan bird called the coconut lorikeet. The Malaccas name still sticks to this bird, 
but in reality it had very little to do with the Moluccans. In the 1900s, Greg Matthews researched this topic and found that there was a painting done in 1776 by an artist known as Peter Brown. And this painting predates Gemellan's binomial naming for the rainbow lorikeet. Gemellan named the bird after examining specimens from the Linnaean Society. But interestingly, the 1776 painting by Brown was also painted from a specimen. And the specimen was donated to the British Museum by none other than Joseph Banks, who had sailed with Captain Cook. So the first original bird was collected by Joseph Banks in Sydney, not the Malacca's. Now it's interesting that Sir Joseph Banks should have a part in naming of this bird as collecting the first specimen. But the other thing that's interesting is that the Banksia flower, like this one here, is one of the favourite flowers for the rainbow lorikeet to feed on. And the Banksia flower is named after none other than Sir Joseph Banks. The rainbow lorikeet, in contrast to many Australian bush birds, has adapted well to urbanisation. Many people have bird feeders, putting out a combination of sunflower seed and lorikeet feed. In addition, their gardens are often filled with indigenous Australians, shrubs, trees and flowers. Hear those calls? These are the miners. They're not happy, for they are nectivorous birds, though on the top branches we can't see them. They don't like the lorikeets coming and feeding on the same substrate that they also feed on. Again, showing another classical situation of rainbow lorikeets at a hollow limb nesting site. The taxonomic question of what makes a lorikeet is an important one. Most lorikeets have a green colour, but in addition, Vigors and Horsfield describe them as having hairy-like tongues, and of course, the cytosine form. That is, the bright colours, the hook-like beak and the zygodactylic feet, where two toes point forward and two point backwards. The only variance that the rainbow lorikeet has compared to the other Australian lorikeets is its longer tail. We have already looked at the hairy tongue and the variations in the iris colour of lorikeets, and the iris colour is also quite distinctive of the trichoglossus genera of birds. On this video, you have already seen the pupil, how it changes, sometimes wide, open and black, and other times small. And the inner khaki colour is the one that disappears. And it's this inner part of the iris that has the muscles that allow it to open and close using the inner circular muscle to constrict the pupil, or to dilate using the radial muscles. But the red part of the iris remains fixed. It doesn't appear to have any muscle component to it. Another feature of lorikeets is their flight. While flying, they use rapid wing beats and fly in relatively straight lines, searching for blossom below. This is in contrast to most of the Australian parrots that have an undulating flight motion. And relative to size, it seems the lorikeets have a large mass of muscle related to flight so that they can fly with this rapid wing beat motion. So the osteology changes as the muscles for wings are relatively large so the furcular, where the muscles attached to the bony structures, is also relatively larger. 
The most important separation between the lorikeets and most of the other parrots, in particular the seed eaters, is that these birds are nectivorous. Let's for a moment head back north, going up into the Kimberley, and here once again we find the lorikeet with the orange nuchal collar, or the red collared lorikeet. Now this red collared is eating seed, but it's not dry grass seed. It is seed from this tree which is like a eucalypt called a bloodwood. It is not dry grass seed, it is moist seed. And for all purposes, the rainbow lorikeet has exactly the same type of diet. Notice also the tail on this bird. It is curved up. It's been sitting in a nest and the tail is a little bit twisted. Seeds like this from the eucalypt genera are an important food source for the lorikeets. The similarities between a red collard and a rainbow are marked once it was considered as a subspecies, but now a separate species. Here another red collared lorikeet doing the more traditional nectivorous feeding off the open blossom. This time it is feeding directly out of the blossom. Feeding off Grevillea this time another favourite source of nectar. Now back to the rainbow lorikeets as they go in and out of a tree hollow, scraping out the bottom, making a suitable site for a nest. Now I know many watching this video will be bird fanciers, they will breed their own lorikeets. They will look at that red collared with the variation in the wing and think if we could only get that to breed. And I'm sure those of you who breed these birds know about the Mendelian basics of genetics and know the dominant and recessive colours and breeding for them. My preference for colour is the natural colour, the wild colour, the rainbow lorikeet. If you have one as a pet, please grow some Grevillea, Callistemon or a small flowering gum tree so they can really enjoy nature's true diet. They will eat seed, but it is dangerous to them. So ensure a balanced, correct lorikeet feed with dried fruit powder or equivalent simulating nectar. Lorikeets will eat sunflower seeds. It's a bit like giving a kid a bar of chocolate. It will all be eaten. As mentioned, this seed husk is not a good thing for lorikeets to eat. So please ensure they get a suitable balanced diet for their requirements. To finish off, just a little bit of history about the rainbow lorikeet and its domestication. Young birds were sold to the colonist settlers and being used of other birds like rosellas and cockatoos, immediately fed the lorikeets on seed. This gave rise to necrotizing enterocolitis, resulting in electrolyte disturbance, fits and death. So to finally emphasize again, I would like to suggest that if you have a lorikeet as a pet, Please grow something like a small flowering eucalypt or something like a grevillea which will have even more flower over a longer period or one of the bottle brushes and you will have a happy bird. On behalf of Plumes of Oz, thank you for watching this video. If you would like to see more video of Australian bird wildlife, subscribe to this channel.